Now, what's happening in Charlotte, and it's continuing by the way, it has become an election issue. Donald Trump says nationwide stop and frisk should be part of the solution. Roll tape. I see what's going on here. I see what's going on in Chicago. I think stop and frisk. In New York City, it was so incredible the way it worked. Now, we had a very good mayor, but New York City was incredible the way that worked. So I think that would be one step you could do. Now, that's law and order Trump. Stop and frisk. Bring it back nationally. Joining us now is a former prosecutor, Katie Fang, joining us here in New York. Katie, welcome back. Good to see you. Good morning. Is stop and frisk legal? Stop and frisk. I don't know why everybody's using that phrase versus mm. actually acknowledging. It's a Supreme Court case. It's Terry versus Ohio. And in Terry versus Ohio, it says, cop has reasonable suspicion to believe that a person has committed, is committing, or is about to commit a crime, can stop that person, pat down, search the surface area of the clothing for a weapon, if they have a reasonable belief that the person is armed and presently dangerous. Why it's okay to do it. I keep hearing that it's unconstitutional. There is a 2013 federal district court decision in New York that basically said that it was unconstitutional. Why? Because of the concerns of racial profiling. That's okay. the actual mm -hmm. conflict that exists. Are you doing it because you legitimately think that that person's a bad dude that's about to do something wrong or has done something wrong? Or is it because they are of a particular race? If Donald Trump becomes the president and he imposes stop and frisk nationwide, Will you then have to um, stop an equal number of black people, Asian people, white people in order to conform within the non-profiling uh, law? There's already built into that Supreme Court decision a stopgap measure which is called specific articulable facts. And the decision says that the cop has to have specific articulable facts as to why they stopped and frisked that person. So there's already the ability to make sure that that threshold is met to make sure that it's a constitutional measure that's taken when the cop operates in his function. Now, I know you're a former prosecutor. Yeah. I don't know whether you ever was a, were a prosecutor in a district which had stop and frisk. Sure. We all apply it. State court, federal court. A Supreme Court decision basically says it applies on every level in every state. So, in your experience, does it work? It works, but it works when cops follow the law and they make sure that they're not doing racial profiling. And we look and we see what's happening in Charlotte right now. It's racial tensions. You can't ignore that. So with Trump going out and saying stop and frisk across the United States, if you do what's constitutionally appropriate, it should be okay. Okay. Katie Fang, very clear cut. You must be a lawyer. Thanks very much for joining us. <laughs> I try. I try. Katie, come back soon, okay? Thank you.